Hi, this is Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. Together, we will consider life, death, and impermanence. Because in between birth and death, we lose things, not just our glasses and our keys. We lose identities, relationships, ideas, and more. But what we can gain right now is facing this together, and we will gain freedom, peace, and progress on our path. Hello, Death Dhamma community members, and welcome. It's so great that you are here. Now, season two of the Death Dhamma podcast is coming to an end. Just like with season one, there will be a hiatus from October through December, but don't worry because season three is coming and season three will return in January, 2023. You can always write to me at margaret at margaretmaloney.com. Remember it's M-E-L-O-N-I or go to margaretmaloney.com and sign up so that you receive updates from me. You can also expect one or two surprise special episodes during the hiatus. Now, let's look at how we've spent our time together. In season one, we spoke with 12 wise teachers, each of whom shared their experiences around death and grief, openly discussing how he or she first encountered death and what it was like and how it feels to grieve and what helped him or her to become accepting of death and live with grief. How did each of these teachers strengthen his or her Buddhist practice in the face of loss? The end result of season one was the release of my book, Sitting with Death, Buddhist Insights to Help You Face Your Fears and Live a Peaceful Life. Shameless plug, available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and audio formats. And I do hope season one really helped to remind us that everyone faces death and grief and that this is not easy for any of us, even for advanced Buddhist teachers. Consistently, they all shared that it was difficult and that sitting with our painful emotions is critical. The more we try to avoid sadness, the more we try to cut off our grief, the harder it will be because it will return later with a vengeance and it will keep returning until we come to terms with it. In season two, we have been discussing impermanence. Death feels like the ultimate impermanence, but along the way, lots of things change and disappear. And once again, 12 wise teachers shared their experiences with us. The truth is that all of our experiences with impermanence are opportunities to deepen our practice. Everything from the canceled lunch plans to the loss of a job or our hearing or a relationship breakup, each provides us with a learning experience if we are open to that experience. A common theme from our season two teachers was the ability to come to a place of acceptance around the impermanence in their lives. Each of them discussed ways in which his or her life did not go as anticipated. It might have been a broken engagement, a career derailment, a drastic change in life expectancy, the ability to have children, the health of the children born to them. Nobody said, my life has gone 100% as expected. That's not the human experience. Things change, always. The ability to accept impermanence is what allows us to live peacefully. Sometimes before coming to that place of acceptance, we definitely deal with attachment. We wanted things to be different. And attachment and stories and examples of attachment, that's what we'll discuss in season three. Now, so far, season two hasn't necessarily resulted in a new book. I will be working on a new book, hopefully to publish next spring. Tentatively, the topic may be around our relationship with animals and pets and why we have such grief when we lose them. That's tentative and you are always welcome to contact me and let me know what you think about that topic or other things that you'd like me to cover, right? So yeah, Inta attachment and stories and examples of attachment. That's what we're going to discuss in season three. And by way of setting that up, I'd say, Please consider this passage 
from Samyutta Nikaya 4.8. I have heard that on one occasion the Blessed One was staying near Savati in Jetta's Grove, Anatta Pindaka's monastery. Then Mara, the evil one, went to the Blessed One and recited this verse in his presence. Those with children delight because of their children. Those with cattle delight because of their cows. A person's delight comes from acquisitions, since a person with no acquisitions doesn't delight. The Buddha looks at Mara and replies, Those with children grieve because of their children. Those with cattle grieve because of their cows. A person's grief comes from acquisitions, since a person with no acquisitions does not grieve. Then Mara, the evil one, sad and dejected at realizing, the blessed one knows me, the one well gone knows me, vanished right there. Now in this passage, when we hear the word acquisition, meaning we have these things, it also means we are attached to these things, attached to our children. And if we are cattle ranchers, we are attached to our cattle. And that reference is important because of the time during which the Buddha was walking around and teaching. Having cattle was a great thing, right? It was a form of wealth. We could substitute a lot of things in that passage for cattle right now in order to to get the point but I think you get the point right so a person's grief comes from acquisitions since a person with no acquisitions doesn't grieve and again the grief comes from being attached to those things if I have no things I have nothing to be attached to but if I have things relationships people stuff then I have the possibility for attachment and therefore the possibility for grief when those attachments change. So we'll have plenty of time to contemplate attachment in season three. As I say bye for now, remember, I have a monthly column over on Buddhist Door Global. It's called Death Dhamma, just like this podcast. And again, you can also come find me over on margaretmaloney.com. Thank you for being part of my community and looking forward to reconnecting with you during the hiatus and on season three. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.